Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Forgiven Gaming YouTube channel. Today we are going to be going over how to defeat the Erd Tree Sentinel. I want to say that's the name of this boss right here. It's going to be the Golden Horse boss you, uh, rec that, not recognize, but the, that you see as soon as you come out of the catacombs, which is actually that building right over there. Um, and that's where you go immediately after you've, uh, defeated or died to the Grafted Scion. Um, for this, we are going to be using this setup right here. Um, we're going to be, we took off the Uchi Katana and the shield. We have just the longbow, standard uh, samurai armor set for the beginning of the game. The Crimson Amber Medallion, uh, three flask of Crimson Tears, and then one flask of Cerulean Tears. Uh, we also have 99 regular arrows. We don't have any fire arrows, so we're going to go ahead and take those off. Um, it does not take 99 fire arrows, and I will put on screen right now how many light attacks and how many heavy attacks would land on this character. Uh, to establish the kill. Um, with this, you can come back to this character uh, quite a bit later in the game, and it's probably recommended to do so, um, especially after you have your own horse. Uh, since we don't want to do that, we're going to start fighting him right now. You want to open up with your strong attack, your mighty shot, and you want to make sure he's far enough away. It's not necessary, but if you make sure that he's far enough away, you can actually land two shots before he gets close to you. From there, whenever he starts to fight in earnest, he's going to have essentially two types of attacks, or at least two categories that I put him into. Uh, it's going to be what I call a quick attack and a charge attack. This right here is his charge attack. For the charge attack, you're actually going to roll into his attack and immediately follow up with your charge attack. And then he will have light attacks like this, and you'll immediately follow up with your light attack. And that's the entire cadence of this fight. He does a charge attack, roll into it, do your own charge attack. So we're doing right here. Is a light attack, roll out, and light attack. The only mechanics that you really have to worry about with this fight is that at whenever he gets down to about half health, he does change up his moveset a little bit to include a lot more shield bashing. Um, and the only thing that's really notable about those is that they have a bit of a varied wipe, which you'll see. Aside from that, the fight is relatively straightforward. Charge into it. Oh, hey, we didn't do a charge attack there. We just sort of Light, light. And then, as you can see right there, his charge attack actually does do a considerable amount of damage. He does leave lengthy windows for you to go ahead and heal with, which we're going to do with both heals right here. Because he very rarely actually follow, does a uh, two hit combo against you, especially if you're a grounded opponent. Charge into it, do your own charge attack. It's all about identify, and then here he is about half health. This is where he starts to do the shield bash. He bashes the ground with them, and then there is a couple variations. Uh, that one he bashes you with. That one he bashes you with, and then sometimes there will be one that he bashes the ground with. The one that he bashes the ground with, I find to be a bit more uh, concerning just due to the fact that it seems to have a greater area of effect. Now I want to say he does that around the time he gets out of the quarter health. Wow, that did. It is important to note that while I found this to be the easiest way to kill this opponent, especially early on the game, much easier. This is that very, uh, that's the channel, or that's the attack I was talking about where he hits the ground. And it does seem to have a varied speed and um, and a, a wide area. He's charging that man, I'm charging him. Ooh, we might actually just have this thing. Ooh, we got lucky. You do have to be careful because sometimes he will do a two-hit combo. He doesn't always do uh, one-hit combos. And again, with you know, the new Soft game, it is recommended that you just take your time, learn their attack patterns, and learn how to counter them. I find that the bow works much better than sorceries against this character because uh, starting off as a prisoner, the sorcery that you have is essentially you put like a little magical turret up in the air. Um, that has varied attack times. Plus, the travel speed of those seem to be a little, uh, quite a bit slower, so the opponent has more time to move out of it, and the resource pool for it, the focus points, seems to be a lot more limited. After this 
attack, we're gonna go ahead and throw our uh, shot back up. Follow immediately with mighty shot. And then, again, don't get greedy at low health. The opponents at low health, do not get greedy. With that, as long as you guys understand the cadence of this, um, it's going to be just, he does a quick attack, you do a quick attack, he does a charge attack, you do a charge attack. With his quick attacks, roll backwards. With his charge attacks, roll forward. Uh, for this, you do receive the Golden Halberd. This is a strength and faith-based weapon that I'll pull up right now. It is... So, it reads... Weighty Halberd, Forge of Gold, wielded by the Order of Tree Sentinels, heavily equipped knights. Deals holy damage. A masterfully crafted weapon that lives up to its heft, but is difficult for one of mere human strength to wield. The skill of it is the Golden Vow. It is a skill passed, or it reads, skill passed down from antiquity among the knights of the capital. Raise armament aloft and pledge to honor the Erd Tree in battle, granting self and nearby allies increased attack power and defense. So it's a very good weapon. Obviously, you can see where the faith element of it comes into. Um, really good for uh, online multiplayer if you're playing with a friend. The stats, it does require 30 strength and 12 faith. It is important to note with any uh, weapon in the game that the strength requirement can actually be cut in half if you dual wield it, if you, if you wield it in both hands. Um, aside from that, I'm just going to go ahead and close this out with my thoughts on the boss. So uh, thank you guys for watching and like, subscribe, and comment. All right, so going over a couple stats here that we have from the fight. We did have an 80% shot accuracy, as you guys saw in the video. We had uh, 46 shots, uh, 9 of which missed. We had 10 charged shots, 25 light shots, uh, one of which was a headshot, and then one bounced off of his shield, only doing about 3 damage. The overall duration for the fight was 5 minutes and 4 seconds from the first shot to the last. And the difficulty, I would put it about a 3 out of 10, similar to the Grafted Scion. Um, with this one having the advantage of you don't have to restart the game in order to try it again, so you can uh, continuously do this one. Um, uh, fun little fact, for the 45 shots, or the 45 arrows that we took, being that they cost 20 each, that's about 900 runes that you can expect to spend uh, to get this kill if you uh, do it in one attempt, and you do it exactly how I did it. Um, overall tips for this boss. Uh, number one, take on this boss whenever you feel ready. Uh, this is the first open world boss in the game, um, and as such, you're not actually you're not required to take it on like you were the Grafted Scion. You can go, you can upgrade your weapons, you can upgrade your character, you can allot your Estus better, uh, and that's actually going to be the second tip. But if you're not feeling comfortable with this fight, go on, do something else, come back to this one. I don't think that this fight is actually expected uh, to be tackled this early on. The second one is going to be to allot your Estus flasks to your strengths. If you feel that you're taking more damage, use more Crimson Estus flasks. If you're uh, a sorcerer and you're maybe using more abilities, more skills, um, then go ahead and use more of the Cerulean. Um, I, I keep calling them Estus flasks, uh, uh, whatever they're called. They're flasks. Uh, and then number three, you guys heard me say it through the video. Uh, light back light, charge forward charge. So with that, he does a light attack. Roll backwards and follow up with your own light attack. If he does a charge attack, you roll forward into it and then follow up with your own charge attack. If you guys follow that, um, you really won't have any kind of problem. Uh, aside from that, let's play some music.